वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला दिस इज योर मॉड्यूल ऑन द शॉर्ट स्टोरीज ऑफ योडोरा वेल्टी आई एम शर्मिला मजुमदार एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कल्याणी वेस्ट बेंगल नाउ बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एक्चुअली डिस्कसिंग द शॉर्ट स्टोरीज आई वुड लाइक टू गिव यू अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू द फॉर्म ऑफ शॉर्ट स्टोरी and would also like to tell you why this particular genre of short story is uh, in a way typically american and what america has contributed to the development of this form now you know if you think the short story is a story which is short you are not really hitting the bull's eye short story is a literary genre Uh, which is different from uh, the novel the novella and various other kinds of uh, uh, fiction now we will start begin with uh, concentrating on the difference between a novel and a short story probably that will give you some idea about the uh, ideological underpinnings of short story about the structure about the stylistics of the um, of the short story form and uh, before that let us just have a quickly look at the biographical details of the author who is going to be discussed in this module it's eudora welty so eudora welty was born on 13th april 1909 at jackson mississippi her parents were christian web welty uh, he, he was a in, an insurance executive and chestina andrews welty her mother she was a school teacher eudora welty was educated at mississippi university for women columbia business school university of wisconsin madison she found employment as publicity agent for works progress association in mississippi traveled into the interiors of mississippi witnessing people from different walks of life she was a skilled photographer caught effects of depression era on rural poor photographs were later published as collections one time one place in 1971 and photographs 1989 now uh, let me get back to the uh, structure the definition the structure and stylistic requirements of a short story uh, you see uh, the short story as edgar allan poe has kind of defined is is a piece of fiction which can be read at one single sitting uh, but that is rather arbitrary what probably he meant was that that short story should be short enough to engage a readers attention at one single stretch now you see uh, a readers attention can last for 30 minutes and 2 two, uh, two hours without going into this we can see that short stories are short shorter than an ordinary novel so an ordinary short story is shorter than an ordinary novel and what i am arguing is that uh, because the short stories are shorter than novels there are certain requirements which are imposed upon the short story for by the sheer brevity of the form for example novels can have um, uh, a very long period of time to cover for example um, 50 years sometimes even 100 years it's possible but in short story it's not possible because it has very little space to deal with uh, secondly the novels can have um, many characters uh, plot and subplots and many incidents which short story cannot have for the very fact that it has to be short now you see eudora welty was primarily a short story writer and we will go into uh, the details of his of her short story collections and talk about how she 
chose to be a short story writer and why it was so important because she was an American and then go into the st stories uh, as far as practicable. Uh, the first short story that was published was called Death of a Traveling Salesman. It was in 1936. The first short story collection by Eudora Welty was published in 1941 and it was called A Curtain of Green and Other Stories. Later short story collections include The Wide Net and Other Stories 1943, The Golden Apples 1949 and The Bride and The Fallen and Other Stories 1955. Famous uncollected short stories are Where is the Voice Coming From, The Demonstrators, etc. Well, um, she also published longer fictions like novella, a novella which is called The Rabber Bridegroom, 1942, also novels Delta Wedding, 1946, The Ponderhart 1954, Losing Battles 1970, The Optimist's Daughter 1972 and she also published an autobiographical work One Writer's Beginnings 1984. Uh, she won several awards and honors. She won O. Henry Award Prize in 1941 and 1968. She won the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 1980, the National Book Award in 1983, the National Medal of Arts in 1983, the American Awards 2000 and Legion Honor 1996. Uh, she is the first living author to have her works published in the Library of American Cities. You see, uh, in another module, I have talked about uh, what is peculiar to America that is called the local color movement and I have described this as a negotiation between uh, realist fiction in America and the preceding romantic fiction. Now, let me elaborate it uh, slightly. Uh, the local color, as the name itself suggests, is a uh, Local color movement is a movement which encouraged and included writers who wrote about their locality, their area, the immediate surroundings and their people, their custom, their habit, their way of life. And you have to remember that United States of America is a huge country and so People who are living in the eastern coast and people who are living in the Midwest and people who are living in the western coast, they had very little communication between themselves in the late 19th, early 20th century as if they were living in two different, in various different countries. And so the local colors were important in the history of American literature because in a way they represented the entire um, length and breadth of the American um, countryside and small towns and brought it into the uh, prominence of uh, American literature. So, there were, uh, there were a huge number of short stories which were written by uh, the local color uh, practitioners of American short story. And secondly, uh, one thing that I will also uh, mention here that many of them were women. That is also interesting because most of the local color fiction were written by women. This is something I will, uh, I will recommend you to remember because when we talk about Eudora Welty in a greater detail, we will have to remember that she came from Mississippi and uh, she is a woman who uh, mostly wrote short stories and best known for uh, her stories. Uh, she had uh, altogether 17 short story collections. They are about characters and situations relating to Mississippi. Welty uses combination of myth and reality. The dominant style is realist. Abundance of female characters portrayed as victims of social violence, whether within or without the confines of family. So we are here talking about Eudora Welty, a woman who was born in 
Mississippi and died also in Mississippi at the right uh, old at the ripe old age of nine, 92 <coughs> and she lived most of her life in Mississippi. So in a way her fiction is also local color fiction which talks about the people who are living on uh, living in Mississippi their typical ways of life their customs their uh, food habits their dress habits and in that sense her fiction is dominantly realistic and now this very interesting question why most of the writers of this local color movement were women you see uh, when this local color movement began in the later half of the um, 19th century uh, women were being sent to school particularly white women they were being sent to school so literacy among women were uh, growing and another thing which contributed to the uh, growth of short story on the american soil was uh, is the new innumerable magazines uh, that were being published from uh, small town centers even from villages and there were local people who were writing in these magazines now it's not very e easy to publish a novel in a magazine so the short story the writers were encouraged to write short story that's one thing secondly you know the women who were educated who were not uh, coming still not coming out into the public arena taking up jobs in large numbers women who were confined to their domesticity they because they were educated and there were magazines which they were reading and the privacy of their homes they were encouraged to write about their experiences of life in and around uh, the place where they stayed so this uh, local color movement had such large number of um, women short story writers and as we go through the module we will find how the how place plays a very important role in Eudora Welty's fiction. Her notable short stories are Why I Live at the P.O., A Piece of News, Lily Daw and the Three Ladies, A Piece of uh, etc. Why I Live at the P.O. is a tale of uncaring and biased behavior of family members narrated by sister sister's obsession with geometrical precision and rationality carried to its limit overtly humorous tone of narration underlying schizophrenic tendencies implies psychological aberrations on the part of sister while simultaneously showing the complicity of family and social uh, custom behind her plight sister becomes representative of women in the south now as i was telling you uh, in eudora welty's fiction the place is very important and something again i will remind you that in the 19th century you had writers mostly from the eastern part of the uh, country that is people who lived in and around um, new york massachusetts boston and in the 19th century there was this great movement towards the frontier as a result of which the frontier was declared closed in 1890 so you see when eudora welty was writing uh, in the early 20th century the frontier has just closed and you know people from other parts of the united states from the midwest from the south they were coming up in a fairly big way to contribute to american literature because in a previous module um, we have talked about willa cather and she was from the midwest and in a way we talked about a novel but though we talked about a novel we can clearly see how the place held a very important uh, important position in the novel the place the nebraska prairie is almost becomes a 
character with which the major two major characters they interact and Eudora Welty also comes from the American South so far not very adequately represented in American literature apart from in the uh, slave narratives and here is a white woman coming from the South uh, coming from Mississippi and writing about uh, life in Mississippi. So, uh, two important things are rather three important things are there in her um, fiction. One is the centrality of the place, the other is human relationship and you know the human relationship that she discusses they are sometimes controlled uh, more, sometimes controlled, changed by the place where they live in and the, the other thing, important thing in her fiction is her use of classical mythology, something which is not very common among, um, among uh, American writers. So, you see we come to this particular story which is probably her best known why I live at the post office, PO is post office and the story is um, there is a sister who has been divorced by her husband and he she comes back to live with her parents and um, a family which is supposed to be a close knit unit and she is talking about a Mississippi which is not uh, neither urbanized nor industrialized. So, there is a close knit community at least there is supposed to be a close knit community but still the sister is somewhat alienated from her family and from her community and though the overtone of the story is humorous there is a uh, um, psychological underpinnings that uh, there are the sister is schizophrenic and uh, the family members are responsible as well as some members of the community are also responsible for this development in the sister and that in a way and there is a plethora of women characters in Eudora Welty's stories and th that in a way represents the condition of uh, women in the uh, south though they were were educated at least some kind of basic education they had and there was this presumption that they are free and they were living a life of their choice but actually they were not and that becomes clear in this story when this uh, woman becomes schizophrenia because of her alienation, uh, alien, alienation from uh, her family and her neighbors. The Wide Net and Other Stories it was published in 1943. It is a collection of eight stories hinged broadly on their historical Natchez trace, moves away from the realist technique of depiction towards a season of dreams. Welty uses her historical imagination in reworking the historical space of the Natchez trace, use of actual historical characters such as Aaron Barr, James Morel, etc. Important stories in the collection, A Steel Moment, First Love, Livy, etc. Um, now, you see this is the next collection of short stories and uh, as I have told you the dominant note in the, the, in the first collection was realistic. So, she was talking, um, she was depicting the life around her. But uh, in this particular collection, it is not predominantly realist. It has um, um, a dreamlike quality about it in the sense that um, the, the stories talk about a real uh, place, a real space which is a marvelous example of um, American engineering skill. But at the same time, this is a space which is imagine, imagined and um, uh, imagined attributes are there attached to this space though there are real life characters but these characters not do not necessarily represent the minute realist details of the place rather they are uh, instrumental in constructing the place in the imagination of the uh, writers and the writer and the characters that she creates a still moment 
continuation of theme of loneliness discussed in previous collection brings together three characters from three different walks of life, each engulfed by his own obsession. Lorenzo Do, the fanatical desire to save all souls, the devilish figure of James Murrell, the equally bigoted desire to destroy all men, and uh, Adubon single-mindedly bent on recording all that filled this world. The trio gaze upon the white heron in the wilderness of the tress, the perspective of each framed by his respective obsession. Uh, Audubon's sudden killing the bird features, fractures the momentary solidarity of the three men resulting in each person's deep realization of being and nature. Now you see, um, uh, this is a story which probably will remind many of you uh, of another story by Sarah on Juet, which is called the White Heron. It is a slightly longish story, can also be described as a novella, a very good example of local color writing in the late um, 19th century. Now, you see there are three men, they have three different obsessions, but they go to the same place and they watch the same bird and the moment one kills the bird, they realize they are fractured uh, relationship, that they are all alone, that there is complete uh, lack of communication between them and uh, that reminds us that we have already, what we have already talked about, that Eudora Welty's short stories are about relationships, how human beings, they uh, relate to themselves, how human beings, they relate to their fellow human beings, and in spite of the best efforts, how loneliness and alienation remain an integral part of human existence. Welty's third and most acclaimed short story collection consists of seven stories. It is called The Golden Apples and is, was published in 1949. Linked together by their common narrative space, the fictional southern town of Morgana also features interconnected cast of characters, King MacLean, uh, Snowdy, Ran and Eugene MacLean, Katie Rainey, Vargie Rainey, Miss Eckhart, etc. Uh, Welty's gift of integrating mythical allusions, especially elements of Celtic folklore, brought to the fore the golden apples. It's a reference to the golden apples of Atlanta in Greek mythology, the name of the town Morgana from the figure of Fata Morgana, etc. Important stories from the collection, Shower of Gold, Sad Rabbit, uh, June Recitals, uh, etc. Um, it shows the plight of southern women enclosed within patriarchal confines, Snowdy, Miss Eckhart, etc., as well as their transcendence, Katie Rainey, the um, comparatively less vigorous male characters, Ran and Eugene MacLean, etc. Uh, so, you see, uh, Morgana will inevitably remind you of Yakna Potofa in Faulkner's fiction. Uh, this is something common to the writers who come from the south because Faulkner is also from the south and in a way recreated the antebellum south in his uh, fiction. So, uh, Eudora Welty had several con concerns in this uh, collection of short stories. One is the, the American south, the there is the uh, consideration of women from the south, how they are confined to their domestic spaces, how they are oppressed by the social customs. And she also creates a mythical and imaginary place called Morgana. And why did she do that? Because she is trying to place her characters in a space which is not spoiled by uh, the everyday experience of uh, other uh, people, uh, other sh short stories. And, um, you know, there are plenty of such ex uh, examples of imaginary 
places in the fiction of writers from the south. And uh, there are mythical references as well. There are references to Greek mythology as it is evident from the title of the short story which is called The Golden Apples and um, uh, which is also evident from the uh, name of the imaginary town which is called Morgana and there is at least one there is one particular short story where the character of Miss um, her name is uh, Miss Eckhart. Uh, she is the chief protagonist, she is a piano teacher, she comes to Morgana, she, um, she is an independent woman who follows her passion, who lives as uh, by earning as a piano teacher, but at the same time she has the, um, has the desire to have a husband, have a family and to integrate with, the, with uh, life in Morgana, but that is something she never achieves because though she follows her passion, she is an independent woman, but she is never accepted wholeheartedly within the fold of the Morgana society and the uh, heavily patriarchal closed uh, society of a south southern town makes it clear that women are still heavily oppressed by patriarchy and are confined to the domestic to their domesticity and cannot probably follow their passion live independently the way miss Eckhart wanted to do uh, the next collection is the bride of the in his fallen and other stories it was published in 1955 wealthy is venturing out from southern concerns so this is a decided departure uh, she brings in characters who are perfect outsiders to southern societies a couple with a man from the east and the woman from the midwest in no place for you my love and a southern girl returning to the south after being brought up elsewhere in kin. Also featuring innovative changes in narrative technique, the subtle suggestive nature of language chillingly brought to the fore in the burning, a story drawing on the civil war and its effects on the defeated southern households. Sarsi, Welty's first explicit employment of Greek mythology, the advancements in narrative technique and handling of subject matter suggestive of the move from innocence to experience also a feature of the development of Welty's longer fiction uh, with time. So you see, um, this is a book which is, which in which she takes a definite career turn because she comes out of her southern concerns that's one thing and secondly there are characters who are not southerners uh, at least one comes from the east one comes from the midwest and there is the story of a girl who is brought up elsewhere and comes back to uh, comes back to south and um, you know um, the in the south of the United States of America, uh, the Civil War remained an abiding topic of discussion because uh, the way Civil War impacted their lives in the South, it was not, it was very important. Uh, it was not so uh, on the life of the Northerners. So, the Civil War was fought, the um, Union Army on the fight and the North almost forgot about it. At least it was not there in public memory for a long, long time. But that is exactly what happened to the South because the life on the South prairies on the cotton plantations were hugely impacted by the civil war. So, there is a, um, there is a story in this, um, in this collection which is called the burning uh, which, which, which draws on the experience of the civil war and its effect on the defeated southern uh, households. And uh, I will again remind you of uh, William Faulkner who continuously talked 
about the antebellum south sometimes imaginatively reconstructed it and showed the deep scar that the civil war left on the minds of the southerners their loss their sense of loss of eden for them so uh, you see to sum up uh, what i can say is that you there are there are couple of things that is to be uh, remembered about Eudora Welty because I argued that in America short story, uh, the form of short story is important. Probably this is the only form that they have invented on their soil because novel, poetry, all kinds of poetry, um, they were derivative forms of literature. Short story is the only form they invented and there are certain situations in America which are particularly conducive to the writing of this um, short story. And I have talked about the local color movement and why there were so many women writers and why most of these uh, local color writings were a negotiation between uh, reality realistic fiction and romantic fiction and I have tried to show how Eudora Welty has very successfully negotiated it. You have to remember that she is a woman writer who came from the American South and there are not too many writers from the American South apart from the writers of the uh, slave narratives who were prominent in the 19th century but at the beginning of the 20th century we, were, we have several writers and they are most of them are women who came from other parts of America and made big contributions to American literature. Thank you.